Hi, if you're here because you're trying to find a lost combination for a lock you own, this video won't help. Um, I recommend checking out Blank Registration's videos instead. They're linked below. Hello again, I wanted to share a neat algorithm for solving master lock speed dial cutaways, which doubles as a pre-image attack on the hash features of this lock. So credit for this algorithm is due to Blank Registration, who mailed me this uh, beautiful cutaway he made. Um, mentioned that he can solve them using the internal coloring, sort of like a Rubik's Cube, if you can see in there. He challenged me to uh, rediscover this algorithm, so I don't know if this, if this algorithm is his exact algorithm, but as far as I know, he is the first person to find one. I'm going to assume you're familiar with MH's visualizer and how it represents the internal state of the lock. I'll explain a little bit about what's new. In the center of each wheel is a circular overlay representing the cutout window for that wheel as it would be seen on the back of one of blank registrations cutaway locks. Note that um, in the real physical world, the right wheel will show on the left side, whereas in the visualizer, the right cutaway wheel stays. Basically, the right wheel stays the right wheel. So each colored section in the window is going to be referred to as a slice. And this gray area, which is unmoving plastic, will be referred to as the indicator. The active slice for a wheel, in this case, the black slice here, the green slice here, is whichever slice is located under the arrow of the indicator. Let's see if we can show that in the physical lock as well. So you can see on the top, the green slice is active is a little more difficult to tell. On the bottom you can see a white slice is active and we will just try to do the best we can with the lighting we have right here. After the cut here, in the visualizer right now, we have set and dialed the correct combination so this lock would be in the opening state. And in the opening state, the active slice for each wheel is the black slice with the green slice immediately adjacent in a counterclockwise direction. You'll notice that because the cutaway is viewed from the back, these will move in a clockwise direction, whereas the um, wheels as viewed from the top move counterclockwise. I'm going to reset, and now we'll attempt to find a working combination for this lock from scratch. I'm going to attempt to do the same thing in the visualizer that I do on the physical lock. I would pay more attention to the visualizer because of the challenges in lighting the interior of this lock. and we are now reset. So the overall process here is going to be that we're going to find the direction of the last move, we're going to find the second to last distinct move direction, and use this knowledge to sync the wheels that are perpendicular to the last move, and then sync the wheel in the direction of the last move, and then move that unaffected wheel into place while preserving the sync of the other three wheels. This sounds really confusing, I promise it's not. Um, so let's begin. We'll reset the lock as we go to emphasize the pattern of moves we're performing, but it's not necessary after you're familiar with the process. So there is one and only one direction that will always leave black slices under all affected wheels. This is going to be the last move direction. Let's try to find that. Moving up, we can see that's not the case. Left, not the case down, not the case, right, yes, black slices under all three wheels. So this is the last move direction. The second to last distinct move direction is whichever direction leaves a black slice under the last move direction's unaffected wheel. Again, sounds confusing, but we know our last move direction is to the right here. So this means that the unaffected wheel is this left wheel. And so on the left wheel, we're going to try an up move, and that's white. A left move is a black slice, and the down move is not. So our second to last distinct move direction would be left, because if it's on that opening position, uh, it needs to be on a black slice. So to recap, let's reset here. The last move direction is going to be right, and the second to last distinct move direction is going to be left. Let's reset and turn on the raw move display up top. 
from here on out, because I'm running my own AV and it's very confusing to try to do the visualizer, then do the physical lock, then do the visualizer physical lock, I'm going to be doing most of the work in the visualizer and occasionally demonstrating with the physical lock when we've reached the end of a step. So now we're going to sync the two wheels in the perpendicular direction. So the top and the bottom wheels are in perpendicular directions to our last move, which is right. Uh, so we make one move in the last move direction to normalize the orientation of the wheels. You can see that the top right and bottom wheels all have a black slice as the active slice. We're going to use the color of the bottom wheel as a reference point to sync the top wheel with it. We'll keep making right moves until the coloring in the top wheel matches the initial color of the bottom wheel, which is in this case orange. So let's count. Okay, just one. So after one move to the right, the top wheel is now orange. This means that if we could advance the top wheel separately, the equivalent of one move to the right, the top and bottom wheels would sync. And we can move the top wheel separately by doing an up move. Two moves up effectively counts as one extra move to the right. In general, it's equal to like the number of moves we need to advance plus one. Then a move to the right normalizes the wheel orientations again, and we see that the top and bottom wheels are now synced on blue. Let's attempt to show this physically. So we're going to go right, and then as we did, we went right, up, up, and right, and we should now see, I believe blue is a difficult color to see, ah, but you can in fact see that blue is, uh, like the active slice is black, but we have the blue slice in the window. Um, the blue slice is partially in the gate, which is why you're seeing it so differently. Now we sync the wheel in the last moves direction, so the right wheel. This is exactly like the process we just did. We're going to use the color of the right wheel as a reference point and count moves right until the coloring of the top and the bottom wheels is red. So one, two, three, four. So advancing the top and bottom wheels, the equivalent of four moves right, would bring them in sync with the right wheel. Let's go ahead and reset to do that. And we're going to get back sort of to where we started. In this case, we're going to do right, right, up, up, right. Here we go. And then moving left allows us to advance the top and bottom wheels while preserving their sync. Same as before, it's the number of moves we need to advance, plus one for a total of five moves left. Three, four, five and then we normalize the wheels with one move right. And now they are all synced on blue. Let's attempt to show this in the physical lock. So we go right, right, up, up, right, one, two, three, four, five, left, and one right to normalize the wheels. Let's see where we are. Okay. And you can see, remembering again that the right wheel is officially on the left in our physical lock, you can see that all of these are on a black slice um, with the blue slice in the window. I've probably made the terminology very confusing here, but that's what I mean. All right. And I'm going to make a quick revision here. So initially when we go right, right, before going up, up, right, that's not actually necessary. So instead, I'm going to change that whole thing to right, up, up, right, which more clearly matches the pattern. And then our five moves left, and then one move to the right. So now we're actually going to be synced on red, and we'll do that on the physical device. Red, up, up, right. One, two, three, four, five, right. Okay. And that may be a little more clear here, now that you can see the reds, that these are all synced on that black slice with red in the window. 
So now we can move the left wheel, the unaffected wheel, uh, while maintaining the sync of these other three wheels. So this is done by moving in the second to last move direction, then the last move direction repeated as many times as necessary. So in this case, that would be going left and then right and then left and then right. So let's count that. We go left, right, left, right, left, and right. Okay, so in this case, it's three times because you can see that the left wheel is now in the opening state while the right wheels have remained synced. So now we can just move the three synced wheels back into the open position just by moving right. And we got one, two, three, four. And the lock is now in the opening state, and we can see that we've created a sequence of moves in the raw move area that serve as another combination for this lock. So let's try this out on a physical device. So we got right, up, up, right, left, 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 right, left, right, left, right, left, right. One, two, three, four, right. Nerve wracking moment. Did it work? Yes, you can see everything is lined up here. And I have unfortunately made it difficult on this cutaway to necessarily open it. But we should, yes, we should be able to open. So I love this algorithm so much. It's a pre-image attack on the hash inside this lock. So if we're given any valid ending state, uh, we can calculate the last and second to last move directions and then construct a series of moves from the reset position that are a combination for that state. I did more of a numerical breakdown slash a write-up on lockpicking 101, if you'd like to check that out. But I'm not going to try a numerical breakdown on camera because I've struggled enough just using the colors to demonstrate. This algorithm does help my intuition for why every valid ending state is reachable. By computation, like MH and other folks have demonstrated that that is true, but this algorithm is a constructive proof, which is very helpful to me. I hope you found this interesting. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and have a good day.